America. They were for a while one of the best teams in the world, and one of their best maps statistically was Oregon. I'm yeah. very surprised that Black Dragon would let this through, and it could just speak to a discomfort with the rest of the map pool. What do you think, though? Chat, we ask you, who's going to win the community vote? And, well, it's going to be Ninjas in Pajamas. No real surprise there. The old Black Dragons versus the new, new Black Dragons. The new, new. That's important. The second That's new is important. Different from last season's Black Dragons and different from the Black Dragons before that, which is currently Ninjas in Pajamas, if you're following yep. along at home. So, <laughs> two news. So, yeah, uh, I, I completely agree with you. I think Ninjas in Pajamas is going to be in a good place here. I think that community vote makes a lot of sense. Um, given the recent track record of both teams. And, of course, they didn't know the map. But, yeah, knowing the map going into this, it's going to be an interesting one. Yeah. What we're looking at here is I would imagine that there's probably going to be a mirror ban. You're going to try to take Julio out of action. He is one of their anchors on defense, a support player on tech, consistently one of the most touted and well-spoken members of all of Latin America. But he does get hindered when you see a mirror ban come out on Oregon. It wouldn't really be a surprise because... Oregon is a, one of the greatest maps for Mira. She single-handedly revitalized the way that Laundry Supply was played downstairs. Being able to sit inside of that closet and look all the way towards the bottom of the main stairs over by Laundry, I would guess she's going to be a ban. That's probably going to hinder Nip more than it's going to hinder Black Dragon. Oh, it's only almost certainly going to be a ban that comes out, and I agree with you on that point. Uh, Julio's definitely going to suffer a little bit. Uh, but overall, yeah, I mean, if you look if you look back, and specifically at Mira, when uh, she first came out, I feel like Oregon was the map that really, like, solidified her as one of the most meta-influencing operators to have ever be released in Siege. Because Oregon was borderline unplayable, I think, when uh, uh, Mira wasn't a thing. So, definitely was an interesting time in Rainbow Six meta. And speaking of border... Line. She also revitalized that map, too. The way that you could hold small office, the way that you could revitalize customs. I can see the look on your face. You rolled your eyes so hard that it generated enough electricity to power this entire studio for the rest of the day. So thank you very much, Michael. Greatly appreciated. We're going to launch Welcome, into Parker. Oregon for our second match of the day. Yeah, and so... We will be starting off with the bands, as you see. Ninjas of Badamas starting on defense means they get to ban first. They're going to take out Thatcher, which is going to force a mute ban here from Black Dragons in all likelihood. Now, here's the thing. That's a tactical ban there from Ninjas in Pajamas. Why? Because Black Dragons really want to ban Mira right here. They really want to ban Mira. But if Thatcher's gone, then you have to get rid of Mute. Otherwise, Mute is going to be a huge play on the bottom floor. And there it is, the Mute ban, which means Ninjas of Pajamas can choose here to not ban Mira and keep the advantage that they were slotted to lose. And they'll get rid of Echo. So there you go. Mira will be in play, Maestro will be in play, and the basement defense is made so much more useful. That right there is Black Dragons getting distracted. And what do I mean by that? I mean, again, the Thatcher ban forced Black Dragons' hands. But here's the thing. Mute makes basement defense much better if you also have a Mira. But Mira is the baseline to that basement defense. So if you have a mute and no Mira, it's a little bit awkward. But if you have a Mira and no mute, you could still make it work. Yeah, that was good banning ultimately to box Black Dragons in here. And something that we actually see quite typically on Oregon, which is, well, you ban the Thatcher, what comes next? You have to ban mm -hmm. the mute. That's it. Because he's so strong right now in the meta, and especially strong when you look at the way that these, uh, these bomb sites work. So, as we go into the match, Defenders we have a really solid defensive Thatcher. lineup here, thanks to the way these bands played out. You're gonna have the Jaeger, the Maestro, the Smoke, and the Mira. Pretty much every tool you could want here. Interesting that we have Psycho in the castle instead of maybe a Lesion. Lesion is definitely one of the more loved operators on this top floor, especially. So uh, curious decision making from Ninja Pajamas, but I'm sure they have a specific plan for the castle to merit that decision. When you're attacking upstairs onto these two dorm sites, basically what you're gonna wanna do is try to police the very few entrances into the site that you have. This is yep. one of the most unfriendly sites to retake because there aren't a lot of avenues for you to get back when you lose control of the site. Basically, the team that has control of this site with 30 seconds to go, or when the plant goes down, usually almost always wins. There's a fool, uh, a few ways you can you can uh, fool that defense. There's, uh, for example, smokes, well-placed, shields on the attack. I mean, uh, but apart from that, it's it's really slim pickings, and it's hard to uh, actually attack when any when, whether the attackers have control of a dorms or white stairs 
or it's the uh, defenders. Either way, it's hard to deal with that hold. Great use of the Jackal Track here from Hugsword. is going to force the Roamer inside of Armory to fall back. It's excellent efficiency from Black Dragons. And speaking of, they will get the first kill of the match. Panico on two Psycho, thanks to a run out from the castle. That really isn't supposed to happen. Claymores are just going to distract you, but they do often get those kills. Wag will refrag, though, before going down. Not sure if he's going to be finished off because we don't actually know what the heck is happening. It looks like he's down inside a master. We'll be marked out, and Ilox able to get that final kill. There you go. This is nothing being able to slow down Black Dragons at the moment. Mm -hmm. We can touch upon the Legion pick, or Legion pick. We can touch upon the, uh, got the sponsors on the mind there. We can touch upon the Mute <laughs> pick, for example, as well, or the Mute ban, and the fact that Mute isn't available to slow people down by being able to deny the information that you need. Pino's just gonna go for a bit of a distraction here on the Maestro up top. He has a rotate in through Attic if he needs to get back to site. He's gonna pre-fire into Armory. I don't even think he would have netted a kill there if he had have hit those shots because it looked like he missed mm. most of his bullets. Well, just trying to distract, I'm sure. The Thermite Charge inside of Closet will be successful. And there's still a Nitro Cell in the hand of Julio, so he can deny the plant indirectly here from Dorms. Nice and safe and snug. There's also Pina still alive with those evil eyes possibly still in play. We don't know where they're placed. There is an Ash and a Zofia, though, so it's unlikely they will be too influential. And a lot of this is going to fall onto Julio's shoulders and Kamikaze at the top of White Stairs. I believe he has a mirror window facing into Generator, but he's going to peek at Iblax and lose his life, which is going to give up a huge position for Ninjas in Pajamas. It's all on Julio now. He has the marks, the information from likely an evil eye. Julio will get one, but he's quickly refragged by Iblax, who has been having a fantastic round, and there's the final kill for the IQ of Iblax. Black Dragons take round number one. Overall, really good performance here, and this just also plays into the site. Once you lose control of that site, once you have the avenues that are no longer being policed, as I said, by the defenders, it's very difficult for you to be able to hang on. And this site is not very retake friendly, so even if you had a C nip, be able to try to go for a retake there at any point after losing control, it really wouldn't have worked out. At this case, even in a 2v4, dorms can be held onto, so you have to give a lot of credit to Black Dragons for the way that they were able to push into the site and clear out the remaining members of NIP. I want to critique Ninjas of Damage though at the same time. We didn't really get to see much of it, unfortunately the cameras wasn't on it for most of the round, but the way they set up their master and armory defense was pretty interesting on the Ninjas of Damage side. It just didn't work out. Uh, they had the castle barricades pushed far over by the armory side of that top floor in an attempt to give themselves more ground to cover. But they did it in a very odd way. They were a little too aggressive on Master, and Black Dragons was extremely efficient at clearing out armory using Hugzord's Jackal Track. So overall, good play from Black Dragons, and a little bit of an overextension from Ninja to Pajamas. They are going to change their strategy, though. It is clear they've chosen to bring the Legion instead of the Castle, which is what we expected to see in the first round. And now they're going to be able to tighten up that defense and solidify their anchorage. So, oh, I said it again. I haven't said it in so long, but I said it again. I feel like once I made fun of you for it at Austin, in DreamHack Austin, you just was didn't it really that it. long ago? It was that long ago. Jeez. You, you mentioned Anchorage a couple, for those that are out of the loop. It's a city. He said, he said, you know, us, that team is defined, he said this site was defined by, by the Anchorage. Yeah. And I said, you know what else is defined by their Anchorage? Alaska. Because <laughs> it's a city, it's not. Because it's a city in yeah. Alaska. Yeah. And if you didn't know. So anyway, I feel like after that was but, said, you went silent, you haven't said it again. So that's okay. Yeah, it's been a while. Anyway, moving on from that, I mean, we have a little bit of a tighter defense here from Ninjas of Pajamas, to the point I was trying to get at. And they're not going to be extending themselves into Master or Armory like they did in the previous round. That is a really fast, on-the-fly adjustment from Ninjas of Pajamas, and it's props to them for changing their operators and their strategy. Yeah, having the lesion here is a good choice overall. I like what's being brought out from Nip. They just basically need to consolidate their defenses that are going to be playing over, likely on Armory side of things, ensure that you can still hold that attic all the way in. And if Wog or Pino go down, then this is going to get particularly heavy. I am a little surprised that there is no breach denial, though. I understand that if you lose control underneath where Wog is playing right now inside of Generator, that you can lose your bandit, you could lose your mute, etc. Obviously with mute band, it would be that there would just be a bandit in that place to be able to stop that wall. But for the time being, there's really nothing preventing GDN from doing exactly what he's about to do, which is open up that wall outside of Master Closet. It's gonna lead into Generator and Wog is now gonna need to move because that's where the smoke was playing. Very interesting choice for Nip to have their bodies there. I'm also gonna lose Pino 
One of the worst operators to uh, have eliminated here. I mean, there's three really bad ones to lose at this point in time. And, uh, you know, definitely up there. The flash is going to the top of white. We'll be caught by the Eager ADS, so that's excellent utility to have. Black's cutting off that roam on the tower, pretty far from the actual action. Ion going for a push on the main hallway. He's not going to find any targets just yet. Then Super Dams are doing a decent job of delaying this, but GDN's actually going to take down Wog, and uh, that's the smoke gone. Gas canisters wasted. So far, I'm really questioning this utility that's been brought from Nip here on this site. It seems like a very half-hearted idea to defend dorms upstairs. The lesion choice was good, but you, like I said, you lose Wog or Pino, you're in rough shape. This is a great read from Psycho as he's now going to rotate through. There's a drone on him, so he'll be able to pick that one off and continue through Attic as he begins his advance back to site. If Nip is going to hold on, it's still very winnable. It's a 3v4 on dorms. We know how hard it is for attackers to be able to puncture this site and pierce this site. They're going to need to hold on to two points of contact. The first one is going to be the top of White Stairs, where Kamikaze is playing. But he doesn't have a throwable available to him. It's going to be Julio who has access to it. He's going to take it matters into his own hands here. Panico and GDM both falling on BD's side of things. It's going to put a numbers disadvantage for Black Dragons, and that swing is brutally quick. As the remaining members of Black Dragons will have to push into sight. The subjected mirror window will be right next to Hugzord as he's going to tussle with the carbine of the Jaeger. He's going to get lit up as Kamikaze grabs one, and Julio finishes things off with Nip having a much better hold on that round and really understanding what to do well with a great crossfire being established. The ability to fight for a draw with Julio in the doorway on both generator as well as the top of white stairs. Props to Nip for that recovery and they will lock out dorms for the next two rounds with that win. It just comes down to them adjusting their strategy instead of trying to extend themselves. They simply tighten things up and held the site which is what you're supposed to do and what every other team usually does from the get-go when defending the top floor of Oregon. You can also roam downstairs. It has been done and uh, is a viable strategy, though uh, it has fallen out of favor as of late and uh, seems to be happening a little bit less. Now, moving on from that. We're going to be going downstairs, of course, as this is Oregon. We only have two really viable Attack bomb sites on this map. Top floor and the bottom floor. If the Ninja's Pajamas are successful here, they will have to defend either tower or kitchen, which are off sites and hard to hold. The one thing that Ninja's Pajamas really has going for them here is they've got all of the operators they could ever want in terms of that Maestro and Mira to deny the plant at the bottom of Laundry Stairs. They also have a good array of support operators aside from that. They're going to have an interesting setup on the top floor. It looks like they're going to be investing heavy in holding the meeting hall, as is evident because of the reinforcements in Attic. Often unnecessary or sometimes actually working against the defenders because you can use Attic as a rotation if you're roaming deep on the west side. All right. So let's get things underway here with this third round in a site that Nip typically excels on on defense and can do a lot of damage attack on on attack as well. We'll look pretty decently standard with this mirror setup. Not surprised to see Julio playing on that mirror. As I mentioned, I anticipated a possible loss here for the mirror for Nip, but no. Black Dragons got boxed in with that mute and. Uh, the mute band, so unfortunate for them. I really like Black Dragon's lineup, let's say this much. You're going to need that Zofia to try and lock the mirror down inside of that closet. You can also possibly smoke it off. That's what the Jackal of Hugzord is going to be. And I am, though, I will say this. I am, though, a little surprised that we're not seeing a Habana get brought instead of a Thermite. Thermite is the highest pick rate in Latin America. And I would wonder if a Habana wouldn't be a better choice here. You use one round of those x Keros to take out the the hatch, and then you're able to get the mirror window from a farther distance. I suspect that from GDN, he's probably going to try to take out both the wall and the hatch by putting the exothermic charge on the back side of the wall by classroom, which will open up both the hatch below it and then the wall too. I'm not entirely certain. Wog's in trouble here though at the top of tower and oh, both he and Kamikaze doing excellent work to pick the twitch off of Repel. And this one man stand from Wog as he's lost half of his HP will just persevere. Two members of Black Dragons, both the Ash and the Zofia, not too far off of these stairs, accompanied by Hugzord as well. A beautiful shot from Hugzord to absolutely behead Pino. And this maestro has been a little too loose, Michael, tossing his life away when the team needs him most. Definitely a poor position there for Pino to be playing and going to put his team in a difficult situation. 
Especially considering he now has stranded Log alone in tower. Kamikaze seems to be roaming nearby in an attempt to support, but he might have to fall back to sight. And all of this utility being used by the attackers will pay off as Ion repels into T3 of tower. That's good control established from Black Dragons, and they're looking to extend their lead. Psycho inside of Attic is going to be forced to fall back, and Meeting Hall control has now been fortified along with tower. But it's not all lost for Ninja Pajamas. They still have the site, still have the mirror window, and they only have to defend for 35 more seconds. That's exactly where it's going to come from, from Ion. Uh, Bob, as he's watching that hatch with Hugzord, having an open avenue here inside of Blue. That's going to be the bunker where Panico is positioned as well. Ninjas in Pajamas haven't seen any real fatalities other than Wagu's at the top of that tower, as we'd mentioned earlier on. But there's not a lot of time at the disposal of Hugzord. The Execute will fall around the two smoke grenades in the Jackal's hands as he looks to try to toss them off. The rest of the team will try to jump in. But there will be no smokes. There we go. Finally happening. As Julio Kamikaze are there, GDN gets one. But he's taken out by Ion as going down in Hugzord 2, and I completely missed every single step of that call. Psycho gets the final kill. Ninja <laughs> Pajamas take their second round and put themselves up 2-1. to one. Something's in the water today. You know... Something's in the water as I, I flip the kill feed in my it, brain. It has been like a year. Intero.exe Intero has stopped working. It has been like a year and a half or so since I said Anchorage. You know, I tried to, I tried, I tried to make it. The initial idea behind Pre that, Austin by the way. was seven months ago. Was it really? Eight months ago. It was in June. I'm not keeping track. You didn't even know what day Christmas was on. I don't trust you with dates. Hey, I guessed it correctly, Parker. I, ha I will have you know. <laughs> December 25th, right? Correct. Okay, thank you. Anyway, it has been in hyperbole. I know what you were saying. A long time mm -hmm. since I said that. And I think I think today is just a weird day for both of us. It's a, uh, yeah, it's, it's been it's been interesting for sure. Attackers I think it's the wall of the super lost. month finally hitting us. Because we had such, yesterday was, or well, not yesterday, I guess the last broadcast Attackers was so good. I also, did, I also did the invitational quals yesterday. Uh, yeah, you did, yeah. And... There's currently invitational quals going on right now. Big news, uh, Team Secret bounced from the invitational quals. So weird. Losing losing to Lestream, two to one on a very close matchup, with that clubhouse being the decider between those two pro league teams. Secret going down and losing to Forza, a Russian team that is not even in Challenger League. And they lost in a two, yeah, oh, and that's, very unfortunate circumstances for them. That's following beating G2 in pro league. It's just a bit of an, a, an odd, Weak for, for Secret, I suppose. Their luck ran out in that G2 matchup, it looked like. Yeah, really. So. Well, overall, that was that was weird, but here we have Black Dragons versus Ninja Damas. Both of these teams are competing in the Latin America quals as well. Yes. So that is somewhere else you can see them fight. Now, we talked about if ta the basement is defended, we will see the, uh, an offsite, one of the um, less picked ones on Oregon. It's going to be Tower as the site selected here instead of Kitchen. And they have no choice because it is a, it was a dorms and basement successful defense. So because of this, Nip doesn't really have a choice. They could have potentially gone to Kitchen, but a lot of teams, I think, will instead... Um, yeah, it, it, a, lot of, a lot of teams will, will not roll the die necessarily with, the, uh, with Kitchen just because, well, Tower enables an aggressive style of play that you can really get away with. Speaking of aggressive, Style play. That's a perfect highlight for what you were just talking about. Psycho peeking onto Eye Black's going to give his team a pretty easy kill early on. Now, Pino playing at the top of uh, Tower T3 is essential for this defense. He must stay alive. And so he is playing extremely passive. If the attackers get control of T3, they will put themselves in a great position to win the round. So that's why Pino is that linchpin. Now, Psycho looking for more kills. He was attempting to peek outside, but start to play a little bit more cautious. Wag is kind of exposed, but he's waiting for an opportunity to run out. Speaking of run out, there's the second kill for Psycho. And all outside the building. Wag, again, still waiting for his opportunity, but he has not had one just yet. These evil eyes must be helping Psycho. I'm guessing one of his teammates is making these calls. And we saw two of the evil eye cams that were outside gathering that information over yeah. and over again, which will obviously assist them on those runouts. Tower is a very brainless site for a lot of teams, and the way they yeah. choose to defend it is, well, you just pretend that you don't have any thought process whatsoever, and you peek every single thing. Hugzord will be able to take out Psycho, so those two kills from Valkyrie will be all she wrote. 
Julio C4. Well, down GDN gets finished off by Wog as Julio flirts with the doorway leading towards the back of the stage, but it's a complete and utter lockout from Ninjas in Pajamas who will make tower defense work. And after a sluggish start on that first round upstairs in dorms, it'll be an impressive recovery and they'll take three in a row. Yeah, so I think that's exactly what you were just talking about before the action started. Uh, the way that you play towers, you need to be aggressive. You have to kill the attackers before they really get in. Otherwise, it's going to be tricky to dislodge them once they've planted that diffuser. How do you do that? You throw Valkyrie cams outside and you run out. And it worked out great for Ninjas in Pajamas. Black Dragons not paying attention to those windows. Now, we get to go back upstairs for Ninjas in Pajamas, and they will be much more comfortable here. It looks like they brought the castle, so they are going to roll the dice on that experimental strategy one more time. But nope, actually, correction. They will six pick into the Valkyrie. I think personally, a really good decision there. Uh, the <laughs> experimental extension towards Master really did not work out for Ninja Bam the first time they tried it out. Uh, and I'm guessing they just brought that castle to try and trip up Black Dragons, which is great. Great mental game uh, overall from Ninja Bamas throughout this match. Starting in the ban phase and leading forward, they really have been on top of uh, outplaying their opponents in terms of operator selection. Black Dragons didn't blink on their lineup either. They know that they have the utility to knock down the castle barricades. Two frag grenades in the hand of Buck. They've got four explosives in the hands of both the Ash and the Zofia with two apiece. So you're going to have plenty of time to take care of any pesky barricades that require that soft destruction that can't be done from Bucks and Skeleton. Some teams might opt instead to have gone with a sledge here, but I think it's the right call to play with the Buck. And Latin America's seen Bucks pick rate continue as we saw he had one of the highest pick rates for the region so far this season. And I think that will probably continue on as he has great utility and a good toolkit all around. And was obviously aided by the changes to that C8 recoil as well a couple patches ago that made it a little bit more manageable for most teams. Psycho, I'm gonna be that player roaming vertically on the top floor. Something we didn't see terribly important for Ninja Pajamas the last time they defended here. And he's actually gonna fall all the way back. But some great information from his cameras outside can call out the west window push and the push into master with this cam alone. That's a really good piece of information that Psycho has managed to gather. Kamikaze downstairs. We'll take up that place that Psycho was filling of the roamer in the vertical. Just trying to hold the bottom of the white stairs, do his best to support his players on the anchor. Hugzord. Working his way into Master, this is going to be where Ninja Pajamas have to focus their defense, and it's where Black Dragons are choosing to attack. Have the Thermite ready and moving his way towards Master, but it's going to be slow going here. Black Dragons not rushing themselves. Early casualties are never good for any team on any site, Attacker really, unless you can bomb. force a really favorable trade. This site is no different. But if you're going to be able to try and get away with a numbers disadvantage later on in the round, bomb it's going to happen on Attacker. dorms. As I mentioned, it's one of the few sites where whoever has control at a set point is in the driver's seat for the rest of the round, unless yep. you have essentially gotten a Pyrrhic victory at that point to gain that advantage in terms of losing utility, losing drones, losing uh -huh. info. Etc. So obviously something to to keep in mind of here. Psycho with the run out, but there's nobody there. He's gonna go for a one shot, two shot, maybe into the lumber stack before he heads back in. He's got a minute to get back to sight. Looks like Iblacks actually might have caught him on drone, which will mean that one member of Black Dragons will be permanently tasked with watching flank. You see, still a slow attack for Black Dragons. I'm just waiting for some picks to be given away by Ninja Pajamas, but it's not happening. Nip are playing exceptionally safe, and that's the exact right call. Drone in the hallway downstairs, as you could just see, but nobody's on it anymore because all the attackers are focusing on the actual push. Wag is going to not pick up that gas canister because he doesn't have time. He needs to deny the plant. The C4 from Julio looks to have been shot mid-air. Panico and Iblacks get their own kills. The flank from Psycho and the white stairs. And oh, what a shot from Psycho to get two. The diffuser is planted, though, so the attackers, Black Dragons, in a good spot. Ion able to be picked up, and that's really bad for Ninja Zipadamas. They need to capitalize on every advantage. Great run out there from Psycho to force Hugzor to think about his positioning ever so much more. The camera is making some excellent marks, and that's three for Psycho. He has 
has all the kills for Ninjas of Pajamas in this round. Black Dragons only have to hold on to half of this Diffuser, but oh, look at that. That's four for Psycho. He's going for the ace, and he's on the cover with Pino attempting to disable the Diffuser. He's inches away from success. Psycho laying in some shots, and he's going to land at the ace from Psycho on Valkyrie. And Ninjas of Pajamas retake into Generator. We joked that every ace that seems to happen is enabled by your casting the so, other day. So yeah, uh, Parker and I, after we finished our last broadcast, we were in the taxi going home. And he was like, every single time there's an ace, I'm casting it. It, it, feels like, it feels like you could literally cast the final moment of one round out of an entire play day, and that round will have so many <laughs> acing. I don't know what it is. It's the, uh, there's it's, this, there's the Kickstar magic is what it is. It's the next Invitational Final, and one team's got one player left on the match point, series point. Yeah. And I start casting, and the, the <laughs> one player clutches it in a 1v5. Uh, it's, it's remarkable. But ultimately, not to overshadow... An extraordinary play from Psycho, roaring yeah. back to life with the rest of his team. He's had a remarkably good game so far. And you could see the jump out from the bottom of White Stairs, the read on the Jackal playing on Master Balcony. They take him down, all because of those Valk cams. And that round was won, in large part, in the first 30 seconds of the prep phase, and then the first 10 seconds of live action when Psycho was able to correctly place those Valkyrie cameras and nobody on Black Dragons knew where they were and weren't able to stop the pushes that were able to come because of the information that those cameras provided the rest of Ninjas of Pajamas. Yeah, so we could say with absolute certainty right now that Psycho is the hero for Ninjas of Pajamas, not just in that round, managing to get the ace, but also just across the map in this match. He has been placing his Valkyrie cams perfectly. And this is really important. There's no IQ on Black Dragons. They have not been bringing that IQ. So not having that as an option means these cameras are constantly hurting Black Dragons. I think Black Dragons is approaching this with a very static way of playing Oregon, and I think yeah. that's very worrisome. Not only did I mention that this ends up being one of Ninjas in Pajamas' most played maps, but also the fact that they end up doing quite well on it. But the fact that Black Dragons have not realized that through five rounds, they need to make some kind of adjustment on this lineup, that's worrisome for this team. Because yeah, you've got a lot of flexibility on here. You've got smokes, you've got frag grenades, you've got disruption, you've got soft destruction. It looks like a very potent lineup in terms of what it brings, but they need something more specific. And because of this, Black Dragon's inability to be flexible in the face of ninjas in pajamas outplaying them on almost most, most points of this map, I want to say, that doesn't bode well for Nip on this final round. Obviously, things can change. We're back downstairs on Laundry. Once again, no Hibana being brought. Well, I mean, I'm... No disruption from Dokabi, no no Capitao. I, I'm not terribly... You're right. Black Dragons are being exceptionally static with the way that they're playing this. And on top of that, they're dealing with Ninja to Pajamas who have been surgical in go. everything they do, from operator selection to the ban phase to their actual play, their strategies. I mean... What we just saw in the last round was beautiful from Ninja's Badama, specifically Psycho, but apart from just the actual gunplay, again, the fact that they picked the castle, then Six picked away from it, knowing that Black Dragons would then expect the extension strategy. They baited Black Dragons so well, and they've been baiting Black Dragons throughout this entire match. It seems like Black Dragons are never dealing with what they expect to be dealing with in anything. So. Overall, this is just excellent play from Ninja to Pajamas on every aspect of the game. And you really have to hand them uh, that they, they earned these last four wins. Yeah. I think that's, that's, really, that's really no contest for me here, is, is the way that Black Dragons have played has been okay on a, number of these, on a number of these attacks, even though I do think that their utility usage could certainly be better. Yeah. But overall, that's kind of detracting from the way that Nip has been able to recover on at least two of these rounds. Uh, you didn't really need much of a recovery on tower because it was a full court press from Nip that I think worked right out of the gate. But when you look at that previous round, I mean, they pulled off what very few teams attacker. have been able to pull off on any type of high level Rainbow Six broadcast that we've seen, which is a successful retake in a post plant on dorms. So 20 seconds left as we've dove really deep into analysis because there hasn't been a lot that's happened. And this well, this is gonna get real messy. Everybody is still alive. Toxic canisters come in. Preemptive fire from Pino. Wog and Pino will be there. Eye Blacks trades it off. Psycho is there. A push from the back as Panico takes one down, but Wog is there, and time is running out. Ninjas in pajamas just need to hold on. No diffuser going down. And all the action occurring in the span of 12 seconds here between these two teams, aiding the defense. 
happens. They don't really need to do much. They just need to simply persevere, and that's exactly what Nip does. Yeah, it might seem like a boring round from an outside perspective, but that was a cookie-cutter basement defense of Oregon. Just a little bit of, uh, I think, a faster start from Ninja to Pajamas would have put it right in the average of when those attacks normally spring into ab uh, action. But because it was so late there from uh, Black Dragons on the attack, they uh, they really, I mean, they didn't have any chance in that tussle. I mean, when it, when it really comes down to it, that's... Nip just waiting for the uh, easy frags to walk into the crosshairs and pressing mouse one. There's not really anything else to say. And that's exactly what Ninja Pajamas did. Attackers Great job on the hold of the basement. Now we will switch to the second half. Black Dragon starting us off in the basement. I think basement is uh, the site that a lot of teams will go to, especially if they're less familiar with Oregon. Um, as it's a little bit more static, you don't really have to think too much about the strategy. A lot of the way this plays out is you can do some you can do some things like uh, roaming, a meeting hall, an attic, uh, or even tower. You could delay uh, for a long time. But overall, small adjustments on this basement hole. And I think uh, just making the site kind of your own is the name of the game here. Interesting that the bulletproof cam is going in the Five attic. Seconds remaining. Right. I would imagine that Black Dragon's investment in Attic and trying to hold meeting will be their biggest priority, just to try and stave off Nip, who have, the, who have a certain rhythm to them at all. Well, it's not a good start for Black or Ninjas in Pajamas. Take your seat, sir. Here it is for you. We have prepared it for you. Yes. Goodbye, Psycho. Thank I, you for all of your hard work. I Black's very courteous to prepare that seat. And that was a single punch hole in the Garage, and then a, what, a one or a two tap, and that's all it took to sit the ash down. Attackers really impressive overall. Freezer. We still Attackers have, have Ninjas of Pajamas pushing their way into... It looks like it's going to be a rush. I mean, it's off, it's quite clearly going to be a rush. Following oh. the skeleton key, this is because the wall was left unreinforced. A huge mistake. Hogzord's going to take down Pino, and Iblax gets his second of the round onto Kamikaze. A third for Iblax, leaving just Julio in the one versus five. And uh, the rush clearly did not work out. It would have been nice to have your three speed of Ash in play for that rush, but not the case. And Julio is going to relocate to the main lobby. He's going to have to have an incredible clutch if he wants to win this. We'll need a Fragmite right here, if anything. Yeah, definitely a Fragmite uh, from Julio. Uh, I mean, a 5K as well. I mean, for Nip, they're obviously hoping that you cast the final 30 seconds in this case. To uh, you to, to, in order to empower All right, Julio. I'll tell you what, you take it for the next 40. Okay. And I'll try to lock out the last minute, and then we'll give Julio the clutch. If he makes it to 40. This is being obviously very, yeah. very considered in a round that was over within the first, you know, X amount of seconds there. Mm -hmm. Julio eating one of those goo mines just outside of the dining hall. So he'll work towards the main lobby, creeping ever so slightly at crouch level, just waiting. A goo mine will sail over top to cut off his advance through the kitchen, but that's not where Julio is going to be, so... A smart play from Ion. There might be a goo mine in front of the thermite here, and if he does hit it, well, he's in trouble. Uh-oh. He sees a body playing on the top of the main stairs, and he's going to swiftly eliminate Ion, but there's one in Classroom, whose now position will be given away. Meanwhile, GDN getting reset from below will give Black Dragons a little bit more stamina in this encounter. And the Doc just peeking around the corner. It's the Magnum. I Blacks using every single thing in his disposal to get the very first kill and the very last kill, and Black Dragons had this round in the bag a minute ago. It was all but a formality for Julio to go down swinging, and that's exactly what will happen. Tried his best, didn't really get anywhere. And ultimately, a good gamble from Nip on paper, but they just tossed away laundry supply room for at least two more rounds. Yeah, and I, I don't, I, I think that the reason they called the strategy to rush in through construction is because the wall was left unreinforced, and you can really get some burst with the skeleton key. Yes, the skeleton key is kind of loud. It's obvious that you're opening up a, a wall, but it has no warning. With a Habana Excaros or a Thermite Exothermic Charge, you have a loud announcement and a countdown to when the actual rush can happen. With Even with an Ash Charge, you have that. With Maverick, it's slow going to open up a wall, and it's very likely one of the defenders will check before you can actually get the rush started. But with a Buck Skeleton Key, yes, you announce it, but you can instantly push your way through the wall and rush the site. However, it was countered by the way the Black Dragons were set up. I mean, yes, the wall was left unreinforced, but there were all the drop downs opened up. There was Black Dragons roaming inside of Meeting Hall, using those drop downs to their advantage. The anchors were prepared for the rush. Overall, definitely an easy round for BD to hold out. Also, following I Black's excellent play individually. I believe he got 4K in that round. 
So props to him for that. Now, Ninjas in Pajamas will be attacking onto a top floor, as is obvious. Not again. Okay, so Black Dragons able to, or, well, losing Iblax early on. See ya. So this time, Iblax is the one sitting down. And it's probably because he's playing Jaeger instead of uh, the Doc. Not able to play those long angles without the ACOG. Bigger visual head hit. Oh, the hitbox is going to stay the same, but visually your head, depending on what headgear, of course, the Jaeger is wearing. Kind of a bigger uh, visual head hitbox. I think every pro player uses that skeleton head on Jaeger. I'm pretty sure. Because it's just, it's tiny. Jaeger's head is almost comical. It looks as, it's almost as big as like the dead mouse, mouse yeah. helmet. When, yeah. When he's playing with his normal default skin. And, and yeah, ears. for people that aren't aware, your hitbox is the same no matter what. Your hitbox is not the actual visual unit, it's what's inside that counts. Yeah, so <laughs> while you can use Jaeger's skeleton head, it won't change your hitbox. Um, it just makes you have a small head. Anyway, everybody does use that. Yeah, because, I mean, visually you want something that looks smaller. That's the big thing, is it's yeah. a mental thing. And obviously if your head looks like it's taking half of the window, as Jaeger's helmet does, then obviously you will be spotted faster. Mm -hmm. The dock that was being run as well by Iblacks had that white Operation Health helmet that looks, while well, easier to see, is also visually much smaller. Now, Black Dragons, having lost one player early on, and, well, actually that's not hooked on the floor. I believe he's just down to one HP. I think I can still see those little ticks in between the health bars. So he's still in play, yes, on one HP. He can be reset, though. That was a really well-placed grenade, from what I believe was Pino. So, good job to Attackers the buck. But uh, that's just going to put him back to 50 HP there. Good job to Black Dragons for being able to get that reset. And that's all thanks to how much time is left in this round. Ninja Pajamas have been decently efficient thus far, and thus they don't need to rush themselves right now. Yeah. So... Panico on top of these white stairs, just waiting to see what can happen. Keep in mind that you don't need to have an advantage on this site. As we will say time and time again, it really hinges upon your control of white stairs, your ability to hold off that armory doorway. How different the site would be if that singular doorway at the top of armory leading into generators was a double door instead. Yeah. How much better that would be able to assist teams uh, either on attack or defense, depending on the way you wanted to set it up for attackers, there wouldn't be a place for you to sit there, etc. But, anywho, Ion returning back to site, realizing that they are down in numbers with Eye Blacks. Feld, Psycho will be very quick and very hot on his heels. There's not going to be anything here to stop the Valkyrie. Who will get spotted and very easy for the F2 to be able to get that kill? Psycho makes quick work of Ion. Black Dragons will find themselves yet again down another member of this team. GDN spots the Ash down below and it's gonna hold fire. Oh, that is so unlucky for Wog, finished off by GDN. Psycho grabs his third kill of this matchup. Pino is there to take out Panico and GDN's return to site will catch Julio, but they're gonna need to plant and in a hurry. Down below, GDN will need to just get lucky with where this plan is going. He'll find a corpse. Can't really do too much. Every angle back into the site is completely being held in this post plant will be a harrowing experience for GDN to try to win this one as he looks to try to avoid match point for his team. But an inevitability match point in favor of Nip in another fast match so far today as Psycho gets a wonderful 4K and is really making his mark on this match in particular. Don't speak too soon, Parker. This could easily bounce back to being a draw if Black Dragons have it in them. Though all things considered, Ninjas in Pajamas, I believe, are going to be able to take this one. From what we've been seeing so far, they have been absolutely on top of this match. Clearly, the Spirit team, at least on Oregon, because this is definitely their comfort zone. That last round was, uh, I mean, pretty one-sided. Ninja Badama started things off with that early pick onto Iblox. I think it was foolish for Iblox to go for the peak, especially considering, he, again, he didn't have the ACOG, as that's not something Jaeger has access to any longer. Uh, and this is one of those maps where if you're going to be peeking outside, so many long angles. I mean, almost all of the spawn peaks on this map are Attackers need to pretty far the from the building. So you're going to want to have that ACOG. Hopefully he won't, or hopefully for his team and uh, fans of his team, he won't be doing that again. He won't lose his life unnecessarily. I feel like whenever you say Jaeger ACOG, like a third of the people watching, their their eyes just black out with rage. And the next like solid 20 to 30 seconds just disappear for them. But you know why that is, Parker? It's because when they remove those ACOGs, they pretty much killed an entire way of playing the game. An entire playstyle just dead. Good. And it was it was definitely, yeah. Good. No, I'm with you on that one, Parker. 
It took me several months to come to terms with the idea of Aegir and Bandit not having ACOG, but if you really think about it, it's the sort of playstyle and sort of, you know, thing. it just wasn't good for the game, and it's gone now, and that's that's good, but... If, are, if, you're in, if you're in a dark place about that, we can still talk about it. Yeah, but there are a lot of players who don't play in Pro League, or competitively... Michael, I was joking about, about these people. Yeah, I was okay. Joking. I don't anyway. Yes. There were a lot of players who don't play competitively. <laughs> they don't understand that's how okay. damaging it was. That's okay. Mm -hmm. That's what that's what that's, it, what, that's I said. what that is. They black out with rage. So, mm -hmm. final match or final uh, round, possibly if Nip is able to pull off a victory here as they sit on match point. We have a very similar scoreline to what we had with the Pain Immortals game. That was a seven-two. It was over very fast. This matchup is barreling towards that as well. Good to see Black Dragons not take a gamble with a spawn peak in the first couple of seconds. That would be extremely detrimental if they had a lost a body early on. Would have given Nip a very powerful opportunity to push into that site. Relatively unabated, especially if it was a Jaeger who has the second best gun, I would say, on the entire team right now, other than the Alda that is in the hands of Panico's Maestro. Good Valkyrie cams outside here from Black Dragons. About the same that we saw from Ninjas, but damn, is Valkyrie playing a huge role on this map, as per usual, actually. Ion, speaking of Valkyrie, going to be getting a nice, clean headshot onto Psycho. And that will put Black Dragons in the driver's seat so far for this round, but they're losing a lot of HP on each of their individual players, so there's still potential for recovery here from Ninjas of Pajamas, despite the difficulties that are going to be obvious on attacking this site. Pino is going to be a huge operator on attacking the top floor. He can deal with a lot of those anchor positions that we've talked about being so very powerful on this site. It's a bit of a miss there from Ion, uh, unable to eliminate the drone of Julio as it just skirts, skirts on by. Which is gonna mean that Valkyrie's position inside of the meeting hall is known to the attackers. And that is going to be a problem. As he's now gonna rotate through the bottom as Ion comes towards those laundry stairs. Iblack's up top on the white stairs. We'll have to engage in a wonderful shootout against Wog as the Ash is just gonna to dare to peek and if Iblacks loses this fight, well, that's a problem. Assuming that he's flashed, we'll see Wog push up. Great crossfire established by Hugzord inside of Kid's Dorms. I'll take him out and give Nip a massive disadvantage here heading in. Hugs. Hugsword finished off though, as Pino gets one. Kamikaze is there on big window. A great repel and has utility as well to dump in if required, though he will be stopped for just a second on these toxic canisters. I don't know if he can actually see through that wall or not, if it's opened up, but there you go. An impact is gonna get tossed in in two, actually, as he's starved of utility. Ion coming back to site swings in and he'll take out Pino and Julio is there as the only member. Once again, the Thermite will be in the final position, but his position is known. He's got an evil eye to watch one angle and the smoke to watch the other. And that will be very quick for GDN as he just needs one shot from the shotgun at very close range to give Black Dragons a massive round for them. Keep in mind here that this is a no-win situation for Black Dragons. The most they can do is fight for a draw. They've still got three more rounds to accomplish that. But we're going to keep on match point for Nip as we go the entire distance. So we'll be going back downstairs here for Black Dragons, the first site they defended and the first site they were successful on for this map. Now, because of that, it looks like Black Dragons are going to push us to that 4-6. All things considered, though, I mean, we, last time we saw the basement defended by Black Dragons, it was a rush for Ninjas of Pajamas, which means there's plenty of potential for a successful hole or attack from Nip if they play their cards right, if they maybe just don't rush in through basement. Panico going to be the one actually playing Doc this time around, instead of Iblacks, who will be playing the Maestro. So they bought the double ACOG. Possible f spawn peak. Attackers we'll see what happens. And as many bombs as they can. have I can't imagine they would go for a spawn peak. I mean, it worked out for them twice, didn't it? it worked out for them once. Oh, yeah. And then, they, and then they lost. And then I think the rest of the round really snowballed uh, after that. Oh, you know it was? I was thinking of uh, Ninja Pajamas, who also had that tower defense, where they were just all outside. Yeah, Psycho just jumped out of every window. Mm -hmm. Psycho's been really on point throughout this whole match. You can see there are 14 kills. He's been having a fantastic day individually. Um, and a big part of why Ninja Pajamas right now find themselves on match point. Ten seconds. Now this defense overall looks to be set up very similar to how it was the last time Black Dragons went here. Uh, what I'm really curious about is how Ninjas of Jams are going to choose to attack this site, because again, the last time they were here, they rushed, and it did not work out. Yeah. I do not expect that a second time around. No. Alright, so, 
what are we going to see here inside of this lobby? I'm very critical of smokes that play a little bit too aggressively here because their utility is vital, especially on this site in particular. You've got both iBlacks and GDN not sitting inside of the site right now. You could theoretically be losing two of your best plant denial operators yeah. early simply due to your own negligence in regards to where you put them. I would agree that those are uh, probably two of the worst operators to have on a row. You still have Panico, though, the Doc. Uh, and in, 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 given this lineup, he is the ideal operator to be here um, on the Deep Roam, going for that T3 control. And Ninja Badam is putting a lot of Located emphasis on taking him out. We've got the Dokubi, who's going to use the phone call to distract Panico. But he's not going to be too wary of it. His position already given away, it's not going to change too much. That audio cue is going to be huge here as Pino does have a frag grenade available, just sails over the head of Panico, juice himself back up and actually give him a bit more sustain to be able to survive one of those frag grenades, but he's going to get traded out as Psycho is there from below. And the Alda of Iblax is not suitable to be able to take out Psycho. Oh, that's a miss from Psycho who'll blind himself and could have possibly been able to grab the Maestro, get two for the price of one there if that flashbang had have missed or hadn't have missed its target under that small window inside of Attic. Uh, it's going to be a kill onto the Maestro regardless, though, as Kamikaze finds the angle through the drop on Ty Blacks. And on Black Dragons on match point, currently in a three versus five, are looking like they're going to end this match a little bit faster than I'm sure they would have wanted. Now, we still have decent anchors play by the B bomb site. We've got the mirror window, and we've got the smoke gas canisters. So that's a pretty big factor, but this is huge as well. Ion has been spotted out by Ninjas of Pajamas. His position given away, he will be basically a free kill when he decides to go for that inevitable flank. He's aware that his position has been given away, and he's going to relocate down to the site. The right call. He's still got another goo mine, so he will leave a trail of those barbs in his wake. Which means that if there is a push over on Laundry Room side of things, it'll be noted from Black Dragons. This allows BD to turn their entire focus towards the back stairs and towards the supply room doors, which is exactly where Nip is going to come from. And they'll start things off with a logic bomb. Hugs were getting caught in the cross with two bodies from BD dropping, and GDN is the last man. And the lone survivor will be outplayed, outwitted, and he will not outlast. The remaining members of NIP. And this one will be a little bit more back and forth, but still a very quick matchup so far. As we've got a 7-2 victory for Immortals and now a 7-3 for Ninjas in Pajamas as well. And they will once again stay even with Immortals with 10 points at the top of the standings. I did not expect those last three players downstairs to not get a single kill on that hold. They, unfortunately for them, very poorly positioned themselves um, and it ended up costing them the round. They had no control extended into the actual site. Interestingly, there was nobody playing the mirror window. I don't think it was popped. So that was just an opportunity miss there for some potential disruption of the push. Overall, that hold from uh, Black Dragons was pretty poor. Uh, and I think it all starts with how they chose to defend Tower.